Supernatural Season 12, Episode 10, Lily Sunder Has Some Regrets. Really love this episode. I think they did a great job with Cass's storyline through this one with his regrets for some of his current situations, him learning about some regrets that he had even when he was, you know, like the perfect angel or something. And I think they did a great job with that storyline in this episode. I think he had a really good path. He had a very interesting uh, dynamic with Dean in this episode because... Um, although I wasn't really on his side much because I felt like he was being, considering the series, I felt he was jumping on Cass a bit much because I'm like, as many things as they, as Sam, as well as Dean, have given up to save each other, they, basically, they've given up the world several times over to be like, well, it's not officially going to end right now, but most likely later. I still want to save my brother right now. They've done that a million times, and... You know, and I guess it was the last time that happened they made that big pact, but that's they've also done that several times where it's like, eh, ultimately you just you keep you're supposed to keep going. Sam was the one that really gave up. Um, so I thought he was being a bit harsh to Cass where he was, you know, making a big fuss about it and saying he was making stupid decisions all the time and stuff throughout the you know, whole episode, but ultimately it ends up working out and he just explains like, you know, mostly considering how many times we've given up some, you know, given up the world to save each other, it does always come back to bite him. And he's totally right, it's gonna happen again, of course. But Cass felt that he did the right thing, so that's just where it is. And they kind of agree on that by the end. It's like, hey, whatever it is, we've done it a million times, we'll deal with it again. So I'm glad it works out, it doesn't, you know, carry on into the next episode or anything. But it was cool the way they uh, kind of played it out with Cass's storyline and we get to meet some of the characters that he um, worked with in the past when he was just a normal angel. Uh, basically his boss from the past who led him like within his uh, small little clique and also some of his former partners. We actually get to see a uh, former vessel of Cass which I thought was very interesting and that was probably uh, one of my favorite things about this episode. It didn't really have anything to do with the story. It was just a cool bit of lore where Cass, when he met them at the diner, he's like, wow, you kept your vessels all this time. And then we see the flashback, and it was like over 100 years ago. I thought, personally, I was like, that's actually very cool that they can have these vessels, you know, last such a long time. I didn't even know that was the thing, where the vessels, you know, kept going, because I assumed at some point the people would naturally grow old. Like, Cass at this point is literally Cass in that body. But those people are still within those vessels and it was just very interesting it's like they technically live as long as the angels do because their bodies are now angel bodies so they they heal they don't grow old and i thought that was very interesting like what if there's a story about that in the future where there was an angel that you know they may have been cast out of heaven all the stuff that's happened in previous seasons but they still kept that vessel that that same person still allowed them to uh take control of them while they were on earth and you know, every time they jump out, it's like, oh, man, it's been, you know, 50 years and I haven't aged a day. Like, that sort of stuff. It seemed to kind of be in effect in this episode. And I just, that never occurred to me before. Like, what happens if someone stays in a vessel for over a century? They just do. They just stay at that age because their body just keeps healing. And I thought that was very interesting. And it just seemed like something that they could go into in the future that, you know, might be kind of cool. So I thought that was nice. Something else that was actually really great was Lily herself. I think she was really awesome as far as new lore for the series. She is just a normal human, but she uses Enochian magic, which we find out is even possible. So I thought that was amazing. She could not be smited. She wasn't as powerful as an angel because they have that sequence at the end where she is still about to die and Cass has to step in. But she can't be smited. That's pretty much all I need to hear. Like The magic is good enough. So I thought that was great. I was like, there's a lot to that character. And she doesn't die at the end of this episode. And considering that, you know, new part of the lore that they introduced with her, odds are fairly high that she's going to be coming back into the show. So I'm excited to see her. But I thought she had a great story in this episode. Very tragic. And I kind of guessed it halfway through. It was pretty obvious the way they did it. But we hear the first half of the story where Cass tells, you know, them, tells Sam and Dean the mission that they're going on or that they went on in the past, Whoops. and as soon as he kind of, well, I guess it was she at the time, but it was Cass, as soon as Cass, um, he basically read the guy's rights, it was like, you know, you're being charged with mating with a human and creating a Nephilim, as soon as the guy was like, what, and he was super confused, and Cass's commander, like, choked him to stop him from talking, I was like, well, 
it's very obvious that this is going to be his Nephilim daughter, and he just lied to get rid of this guy, and I, I don't know, I guess he just, I guess he was mad they got busted, that's what I was thinking in the beginning, like, oh, maybe he wanted them to be hidden, but somehow they got sloppy, she ended up with another angel, and that's how they got busted in the first place, and it's like, well, he was just mad that they got sloppy, so it's like, well, I have to do this, and he had to, you know, he ended up killing his own daughter out of, like, rage and stuff. And then we get the true version of the story where we find out, uh, and I knew it was going to be this way, as soon as uh, Lily said that her father gave her that and that's why she likes it, I was like, crap. Even though that still could have worked where it was, she, the girl was still a Nephilim, but just the way they explained certain dialogue before she went into the backstory. Once she said that, I was like, oh, her daughter is human. And of course that's how it played out. And we find out, and I, I wish I could remember his name, I, I suck at names, but... We find out that the guy was just jealous that she basically went from one angel to the next and all his stuff about hating humans and everything like that is probably stemming from the fact that, um, as Lily put it, he wasn't in love with her, he was obsessed with her and then she moved on from him and she ended up with another, another angel, which I'm very curious how that played out. Did she summon him as well or was that just, you know, she mentions how she went through uh, learning Enochian magic and stuff and that's how she summoned the first angel in the first place. So, it was just very interesting, like, how did they end up meeting, but he kills him out of anger, and then he's like, you, you know, you broke my heart, so I'm going to break yours, and he kills her daughter under false pretenses, and I was just like, that's, that is very tragic, and so Lily decided to basically use this magic that rips away a part of her soul every time she uses it, which I thought was a great callback, considering they had that little moment with Sam where he's basically able to finish what she's about to say it was like yeah you won't care about anything in the world you won't care about your daughter in the past you won't care about humans now because their whole thing the whole episode was like i don't want to hurt any human characters like she kept saying that to sam and dean like i really don't want to hurt you guys you're humans i've got nothing against you and you know that was something else that she was worried about like i just won't care at some point if people get in the way human whatever if i don't have a soul then that's just what it's going to be I thought that was a cool little callback that they had for her character, or uh, for Sam's character with her, and it was just good, the way it all went about, like I said, with Cass, where he's questioning some of the decisions that he's made in the past, where, you, you know, they first go to the diners, like, some consider him a hero, some don't, he used to be this really good angel, his uh, commander used to envy him, like, you know, you were God's chosen angel, that sort of stuff, you died and were brought back, all sorts of things were really brought into this episode just for, you know, Cass himself and the decisions that he's made in the past and uh, characters like Balthazar and Uriel, which I thought was cool. I don't remember if they mentioned this in the past, but him having led them um, in their own little legion, I thought was very cool. Like I said, with 12 seasons, there's always times where I forget stuff, so I don't remember them specifically saying that's how he knew them. It was just that he knew them before and that was pretty much it i kind of feel like every angel already knows every other angel because that's how they act sometimes where it's just like oh it's that angel like they all seem to know each other in this show like every time but i thought that was interesting i was like okay he actually led them when they would fight you know in godly battles and stuff like that so i just thought it was very interesting when they mentioned uh, balthazar and stuff and it was like oh that's how he specifically knew them he was actually their commander at one point so i thought that was really well done the mystery when things first started with Lily, like, what the heck was she? I thought that was really cool. You know, it starts off with, excuse me, this uh, random angel. I don't know why they filmed it at, like, a bar arcade thing, but I thought that was cool because I love video games. So the whole, you know, beginning section, the woman is playing Rampage, and I love that game. So I was like, this is really cool. Just a nerdy little moment. But it was when she, uh, when Lily first showed up, and it's like, do I know you? I knew it wasn't an angel thing, because every time, and this is something else that always happens with the angels, every time they show up, they always mention that it's another angel. They always say, like, oh, hello, brother, hello, sister. Every time, they've always done that. So when she was like, do I know you, I could tell it wasn't just, oh, you're an angel that I don't know. It was, she's not an angel, like, they, because they'd be able to see each other. It was clear it wasn't a demon, because they can also see each other, too. So there was some interesting stuff there, like, what, you know, what's happening, her not being able to be smited and stuff. Um, during that second battle, it was just like, I don't understand what's happening. When she gets cut, she just bleeds normally, so you could tell there's something, something natural about her. But it was very cool, the way they did that, because I was just like, I don't understand what's happening with this character. She had the angel blade, but you could tell she wasn't an angel. She couldn't be smited, and it was just, it was very weird how they did it. 
in, in a cool way. We're in a cool way. Just that little bit of mystery. And then we find out it's just Enochian magic in general. But I thought that was very cool. Like I said, I'm almost 100% sure they're going to bring her back. That's too big of a thing to introduce to not have that character come back. And either she'll have to give up her soul to help them out at some point in the future. Or she'll just end up teaching them the spells or something like that that they can use every once in a while. Or, you know, they do the soulless thing in a different way maybe and just see how that plays out. But... I loved it. I thought it was really cool that they introduced that bit of lore. Cast's storyline was great in this episode. Uh, the action, I definitely thought was pretty well done. Um, all, you know, they they typically do some good action, but it's typically a lot of uh, gunplay, of course, with Sam and Dean. But in this, we got to see a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was, a, I think, three different Angel Blade fights, so that's always really cool to me. And they actually lasted for quite a while. So that, that was actually nice. It wasn't like, you know, a couple of strikes... And then someone gets pinned down, like the first one. Last, that was probably almost a solid minute of them actually fighting each other, or close to it. So I was like, alright, that's a bit of a difference. We don't normally get fights that last that long. They're Typically they start fighting and then someone else comes in and breaks up the fight or changes it up. And then there's some dialogue thrown in and it goes to commercial. But we got to see some pretty decent fights in this. And, of course, the cosmic um, repercussions... We'll have to wait and see. Who knows if that'll be this season, if they'll wait and save that for next season. They didn't really get anywhere as far as the main story of searching for this Nephilim because they don't know where the woman is, so it's like they got nothing. So this was kind of a side story, but I feel like there was some good stuff added to the lore for this episode. And ultimately, it was just good in general. I think they did some great stuff with Kaz and the things that he's questioned, um, you know, currently or, or recently. And how he should question some of the things that he even did as a perfect angel. So, I thought it was really well done. Um, one super random thing outside of the arcade stuff was Cass's former vessel. The actress that played her looked just like the other actress to me. I believe um, it was like Muriel or Mirabelle or something like that. Like the second person, that, the woman who got killed outside the diner. I thought that actress and the woman who played Cass's former vessel looked so much alike, it was weird to me. I was like, they look like they could just be sisters. This one person was taller than the other. And I wanted to mention that because I don't know if I'm alone in seeing that. I just thought they looked a lot alike. Um, just like, specifically around the mouth. I was like, they seem like they have the same, uh, like, jawline sort of structure. I was like, that's really weird. They actually look a lot alike. So, that was just something I noticed that I wanted to mention before I ended out the review. But... Good episode. Would love to know what you guys thought about it. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I would love to know how you guys felt about what they did with Cass in this episode. It was definitely focused a lot on him honoring, you know, not only his f current family with Sam and Dean, but also his former family with the rest of the angels and those that he was very, very close to in the past and the decisions that he made. Like I said, for me personally... I think they did a great job with it, but would love to know how you guys felt about casting this episode, and of course the episode in general, so please comment below and let me know, and thanks for watching.